This Use a Play is brought to you by I won For me To me For me uh, uh. Yes. You don't need speakers, right? Upgrade to win every week with Line. Sign up for Line TV or broadband or purchase an iPhone 6 or Samsung Note for Upgrade Christmas with Lime. This is a Barbados Today morning update for Monday, January 5th, 2015. I'm Carol Williams. Good morning. The clock is ticking down to the end of the 72-hour deadline given by the Barbados Union of Teachers to the Ministry of Education. Up to yesterday evening, Union President Pedro Shepard said he had heard absolutely nothing from the education officials since their meeting on Friday. He tells Barbados today that an urgent meeting called with the union's membership tomorrow, the first day of classes, will go ahead as planned. The talks are being held to update members on the situation at the Alma Paris and Parkinson Memorial Schools, as well as the appointment of temporary teachers. We have not heard anything from them since then. We are currently going ahead with a planned meeting, special general meeting for our membership on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. at Solidarity House. And we are asking all teachers, all members of the Committee of Teachers to attend this very important meeting to be updated on the status at Alma Paris School, at Parkinson School, at, as well as the status of the appointments of temporary teachers, which is being handled by the Public Administration Department. Shepard says the union has no plans of calling off the meeting unless education officials present a satisfactory resolution to the outstanding matters. It's not a case of simply coming back to us because we have met enough and I don't think this is time now for any further meetings. It is time now for a resolution to the issue. Labour Minister Senator Dr. Esther Bayasuku has declined to comment on the situation. However, she did speak on another matter, that of employment. She says she expects to see improved numbers in 2015. Through some of our, our programs, we're looking to stimulate self-employment, to stimulate entrepreneurship. That's one of the things we're doing. And then, as I also mentioned, a number of activities in various ministries would hopefully trigger some employment. Plus, we anticipate, um, even if it's so small, uh, a growth in the economy. And that, of course, we expect that rising tide, as they say, would, would, would float all boats. So we expect to see a turnaround in the employment situation in 2015. Meantime, the Labour Minister says she is open to discussions with the National Union of Public Workers, which has promised to stage a protest march over the National Conservation Commission matter. She says government has already appointed its members to the tribunal that will hear the NCC issue and others, and it's now up to the employers and trade unions to put forward their nominees. If they have an issue with me, we have developed the type of rapport over the years that they, they would normally indicate to us uh, what the challenge is. As far as the tribunal is concerned, I would have indicated, and I will, I will give more details very shortly, but I would have indicated that the government side has been formed, and it is the unions that are to name their representatives, and the employers are also to name their representatives. So I'm not sure what the challenge is that, that any of the unions would have or any of the others would have, but of course, as I said, what we do best at the Ministry of Labour is encourage consultation. So if there's a challenge, they know they can always get in touch with me. Over now to crime where police have issued wanted bulletins for five men described as armed and dangerous. While one of the men has not been identified, the others are 25-year-old Leon Garfa Lawrence of Block 10D Bonnets House in area St. Michael, 33-year-old Jason Cecil Spencer of 4th Avenue Pickwick Gap, Westbury Road, St. Michael, 31-year-old Kyle Ramon McNeil Hines of No. 17 Pleasant Hall, St. Matthias, Christ Church, and 39-year-old Ron Lionel Hill of Block 3B, St. Matthias, also of Christ Church. Lawmen are asking the men to turn themselves over to police accompanied by an attorney at law. They say anyone caught harboring or assisting the men can be prosecuted. Residents with information on their whereabouts are being asked to contact the police emergency at telephone number 211, the nearest police station, or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477. Still with crime, a man is in police custody assisting with investigations into the New Year's Day killing of 31-year-old Jason Carter. Carter, who lived at Vauxhall No. 1 Christchurch, was shot in his face by another man. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital.
There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power. In sports, former West Indies captain Clive Lloyd is blaming T20 cricket for some of the problems facing West Indies cricket. He says T20 cricket has created a situation where playing tests for a country is not viewed as a paramount goal for players. He was speaking at a lecture in Cape Town, South Africa, which is also hosting the third test between the Proteus and West Indies. Lloyd says the International Cricket Council also needed to be stronger. He referred to last year's restructuring of cricket's governing body, saying the game could not be ruled by only three countries. In the region, the leader of Ghana's opposition coalition is warning that uncertainty about the date for general elections is putting a damper on the economy. David Granger, the leader of the opposition coalition APNU, is suggesting that business people are afraid to invest. He pointed out that the National Assembly has not met for five months to deal with the people's business, calling it a travesty. Over now to the United States, where hundreds of police officers yesterday turned their backs on the mayor of New York at the funeral of the second of two police officers shot dead last month. When Jain Lu, the son of Chinese migrants, was killed along with his partner by an African-American gunman, many rank-and-file members of the New York Police Department accused the mayor of sympathizing with anti-police protesters. We get more in this BBC report. Now, we do know last week uh, when his partner, Officer Rafael Ramos, was laid to rest, when Mayor Bill de Blasio spoke at the funeral, uh, scores of NYPD officers actually turned their backs on the monitor while the mayor was given the eulogy. So uh, sort of politicizing the whole debate between City Hall and the NYPD, many police unions saying that the mayor has not shown them enough support uh, with recent cases of men uh, being killed while officers were trying to arrest them. But at this point, the NYPD police commissioner did urge all of his officers not to show any disrespect here at the funeral, that this is a time to remember and reflect on the life of Officer Wen Jin Lu. And that brings us to the end of our Barbados Today morning update. Join us again this afternoon. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.pb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Carol Williams. Have a great day. This news update is brought to you by... You're feeling lucky, you could win some money. And I'm great for Christmas. $200,000 in cash and prizes. With Lime, you could win some money. Upgrade. It's Lime's Christmas Lottery. 250 winners this Christmas, oh yeah. Sign up for upgrade to super fast broadband. Lime TV, e billing, a data plan. Top up $15. Purchase a handset or text 4263 to enter. I'm great for Christmas.